everyone. Earlier in the year, I got myself a rotary tool. It was a uh, Foreman clone, I guess, that I picked up on Amazon a heck of a lot cheaper. Now, this clone, this rotary tool, came with this foot pedal. Foot pedal is always a little touchy and it's not particularly sensitive. So, you have to have extremely good foot control to maintain a constant speed with this. Um, usually it's either all on or all off. So it, you can adjust a little bit, but it's, the adjustment's not great. So what I've been wanting to do, I've been wanting to get a desktop control with a little knob. And uh, I've seen them all over. But I haven't seen a clone one. All I've seen is the official Fordham ones, which can get not super expensive, but they're kind of expensive. Um, and I didn't want to spend that much money. So I'm going to try and build one today. Now, a lot of people have recommended that I get a Variac, which is a variable AC transformer. And uh, it's almost the same price, really. I mean, a little bit cheaper, but. I think I can build something. The foot pedal doesn't have a transformer in it. When I look inside it, it's just a simple switch, which is uh, most likely some form of a variable resistor that allows it to that adjusts the uh, voltage as you press on it. So. I think I can build something like this with uh, some simple stuff that I can pick up at, at uh, Lowe's. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to build myself a desktop variable uh, speed control for my rotary tool. So the first thing I really wanted to get a look at was what this switch inside here looked like. I knew it was probably not going to be anything too substantive. The foot pedal itself, the plastic is very thin and it, it just not high quality build. So as you can see it's just a very simple variable switch. Um, I don't see why I need a variable transformer to do this when even the supplied switch has no special electronics in it at all. So that makes me feel a little more comfortable about this project. And here's the equipment that I purchased for it. I got the uh, rotary fan control single plug outlet and then the uh, cord. I didn't want... it was actually more expensive to build a cord than it is just to buy a extension cord like this and cut off the end. So that's what I did. I cut off the end of the extension cord and used it to power my switch. So I just grabbed this piece of laminated pine I guess it was cheap and with wood prices now um, this will be just fine for the use I need it for. So I measured everything out and I went to cut it. I got a brand new Ryobi saw and I really wanted to try and use that for this project. I've always had a problem of cutting straight lines with it though. So, and it pretty much turned out the same way. I ended up having to recut it again on the table saw.
that have no way of routing the edges of a small board because they were too small to hold down and get a good route on. So I ended up making them again but routing the channels first on the edges and then recutting it again on the table saw. This is actually the first time I was able to use this router on a project. This is actually this is my first router that I've ever owned and I just love using it. So this little clamp I'm using I picked up at Harbor Freight. It's actually a pretty decent little clamp for stuff like this for small projects, small bits of wood. Um, I really like being able to put it on and take it off again without having to have a permanently mounted. This actually took a bit of back and forth with the sawing and fitting, sawing and fitting, filing, um, before I got it to the right size that it needed to be. I just started recently using this jigsaw again. Um, I picked it up at a thrift shop about a year and a half ago and it actually works really well. I need to start using this thing a little bit more often. So here I'm cutting stop lines around so I can chisel out the areas. This actually took a while because of, I kept misjudging how deep I needed to cut it and I had to keep going deeper. But the wood was super easy to carve out. It's just a very soft pine so I was able to, I think it's pine, but I was able to get it in there really easily. And, very easily chisel everything out. Of course, once I had the outlet area chiseled out, I had to uh, chisel out the switch area, so I pulled out the V-tool to make it easier along the edges, and uh, that actually really helped a lot.
So I actually forgot to buy a second outlet cover for the switch. So I found this piece of plywood I had sitting around and decided to make my own switch cover with it. So here I'm just cleaning up the wood with some denatured alcohol so I could put I, uh, put electrical tape around the inside and then the denatured alcohol really gets off a lot of the sawdust for when I want to glue it up. Honestly I don't think I probably needed the electrical tape on the inside but it's probably safe than sorry I guess. Now I do have some proper wire strippers somewhere, I just didn't want to go looking for them. So I had a knife sitting there and figured what the heck. I don't know if I strictly needed to uh, tin the wires, but I went ahead and did it anyway. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Honestly, I probably should have read the directions that came with the switch, but I figured it's a switch, how difficult could it be? So I wired it up and yeah, just like that. And here, I probably could have used a little uh, wire cover, the little twist on wire covers, but I decided to go ahead and solder the wires together and put a shrink wrap over it. And then uh, one of the wires was sticking out of the side when I shrink wrapped it, so I wrapped it around again with electrical tape. So I didn't use any fasteners in this. Usually I'm one to go ahead and put some screws in there, but I decided just to do it all glue this time. So that's the only thing holding it together is wood glue. And it seems to have held up okay. Okay, so right here the battery died on my camera but luckily it was right near the end so I picked it up the next morning on taking off all the clamps I think
think I made about two or three of these little end pieces before I actually got the saw to cut in a straight line. And then I just had to make it a little bit bigger and plane it down to fit. Okay, so this is the plug to the rotary tool, and I just plug it into the back of the box. The scariest part for me, because this is where I find out if I get electrocuted or not. Okay, so there we go. This uh, it actually turned out pretty good for for me. Um, I don't think I've made a box quite this nice before. I will put an end cap over here. Um, I found at first I thought that I had switched some wires on the inside, and that's why it would speed up real fast and then slow down as I turned it. But upon further research, I just found out that that's how fan controls work. So, yeah, I'll put a uh, cap over the end with a notch on it and call this good. Um, it's going to be good to have, especially since I have a reciprocating handpiece for my rotary tool. So I can try the power carving with a uh, reciprocating chisel. Um, and I definitely need it to be able to control this at lower speeds. So, yeah. So this has been a fun project, hope you enjoyed watching, and we'll see you all later, thanks.